my name is Louise McCluskey and I am going to present this A lecture on joint design to Eurocode 3. So there are three main parts to this presentation, so an introduction, a section on bolted joints and a section on welded joints. Um, this part of the presentation is just going to cover the introduction and bolted joints. In the Eurocodes we will need to refer to EN 1993 part 1-8 which covers the design of joints. A joint is defined in clause 1.4 as a zone where two or more members are interconnected. EN 1993 part 18 is extremely long compared to other sections of the Eurocode 3, so this presentation will only touch upon some of the key points. So there are three types of joints that we can have and they are defined by the various clauses in the Eurocode. Normally pinned or simple joints are capable of transmitting internal forces without developing, developing significant moments and capable of accepting the resulting rotations under the design loads. Um, rooted and full strength joints um, have sufficient rotational stiffness to justify analysis based on full continuity. So here in the figure you can see a full strength butt weld, preloaded friction grip, a bolted joint and an additional web stiffener. The semi-rigid joints lie somewhere between nominally pinned and rigid. So here are some examples of bolted pin connections. So we have a tie rod, and then three examples of beam to column bolt connections. Um, and some more examples of pin connections then. So we have beam to column, beam to beam, and column to foundation connections here. Um, some examples of rigid uh, joints here. So A, B, and C are rigid column brackets. D and E are rigid beam to column joints. And F is a column to column joint. Um, so basically a splice joint. And some more examples of rigid joints here. So G is a beam splice. H is a rigid hollow section joint. So it's found typically in a T joint in a Verndale girder. I is a rigid column to foundation joint, and J is a rigid knee joint, which can be found in a portal frame. So back to the Eurocodes. Basically, the principles used for the design of joints are mostly the same as BS5950, and therefore the results are the same. However, due to a larger partial safety factor for connections of 1.25, the results obtained using Eurocode 3 are slightly more conservative than BS5950. Now this is Table 3.1 from Eurocode 3, Part 1.8, and it gives the nominal values of the yields and ultimate, ultimate strengths of the bolts, so we will be referring to this table for joint design that involves bolts. And this is an extract from the product standards, and this gives us the yield and ultimate tensile strength of rolled steel sections, so we might need to refer to this table to get the strength values for different elements. So I've already touched upon the partial factors for joints and I've said that they're relatively large and in the case of bolts and welds the value is 1.25. So now this section is going to be dealing specifically with bolt joints. So we're talking about bolted connections and in particular we're going to talk about table 3.4 of EN 1993 part 18 which is concerned with the design resistance of single bolts. Now table 3.4 gives the different checks required for individual fasteners subjected to shear and or tension. And checks need to be carried out for a number of possible failure modes so shear resistance per shear plate, bending bearing resistance, tension resistance and combined shear and tension. So I'm going to run through a summary of each of the checks which are listed in table 3.4. And note there's also a check for punching shear resistance in the table, but I'm not going to discuss it in this lecture. So the first check I'm going to cover is related to tension resistance. So this is the equation given in the table. So the tensile resistance is equal to K2 times FUV times AS over gamma M2. And AS is the tensile stress area of the bolt, and that can be obtained from the blue book. Gamma M2 is 1.25. FUV is ultimate tensile strength of the bolt. And you get that from table 3.1 in Eurocode 3, part 1.8. K2 is 0.63 for counter stud bolts, otherwise K2 is equal to 0.9. So it's just a matter of substituting in the values. Now the next check is for shear. Uh, this is the first equation, and this is for when the shear plane passes through the threaded portion of the bolt. So the equation is alpha V times FUB times AS over gamma M2. Alpha V can be found from the table at the bottom, and the values are just taken directly from table 3.4. AS is the tensile stress area of the bolt, so you get that from the blue book. FUB, again, is ultimate tensile strength for the bolt, and you get that from table 3.1. And gamma M2 is 1.25. Now this check is for shear when the shear plane passes through the unfitted portion of the bolt. 
So the equation is 0.6 times FUB times A over gamma M2. So it's the same as the equation on the previous slide, except that alpha V is replaced by 0.6. And that AS is replaced with A, which is the gross cross-section of the bolt. FUB again is the ultimate tensile strength of the bolt, and it's obtained from table 3.1 in Eurocode 3, part 1.8. And gamma M2 is 1.25. The next check then is for bearing resistance of ordinary bolts, so this is the equation given in table 3.4. So we have K1 times alpha B times FU times D times T over gamma M2. D is the bolt diameter, T is the thickness of the connected parts, so if the parts of different thicknesses are connected, then take the smallest value. Um, gamma M2 is 1.25. FU is ultimate tensile strength, and I'll show you how to get K1 and alpha B in the next slide. So these are the expressions that you need to, to get the values of K1 and alpha B. So you can see that these depend on the bolt spacing and the edge and end distances. So you need to get the minimum value from those different terms. So for example, for end bolts, alpha B will be the smallest value of either E1 over 3D0, FUB over FU, so that's the strength of the bolt over the strength of the plate, or 1.0. So you use those expressions to work out the values of K1 and alpha B. So this is another check, and it's for situations where bolts are under combined shear and tension. So this is the expression that you would use, and again, that expression is from table 3.4 of EN 1993 part 18. So that's just a really quick summary of the main checks from table 3.4. Now I'm going to talk about the positioning of fastener holes. So in the case of maximum and minimum spacing, end and edge distances, then we need to refer to table 3.3 of EN 1993 part 18, where guidance is given. So at the bottom here, you have a diagram of a plate with bolt holes, and you can see four terms that are defined, so P1, P2, E1, E1 and E2. You can see that E1 and E2 are the end and edge distances. So the end distance E1 is measured from the centre of the bolt hole to the end of the plate, in the direction of load transfer. You can see that the minimum distance that that should be is given in the table at the top, and that's 1.2 D0, where D0 is the hole diameter. Now the edge distance E2 is measured from the centre of the bolt hole to the end of the plate. This time it's measured perpendicular to the direction of load transfer. And you can see that the minimum distance that that should be is also 1.2 D0. So those minimum distances have been extracted from table 3.3. Now here is the same diagram and you will see that P1 and P2 represent the spacing. So the spacing P1 between the centres of bolt holes in the direction of the load transfer. Well the, minimum, well, the minimum distance that that should be is given in the table at the top, and that's 2.2 D0. Again, D0 is the whole diameter. And now the spacing P2 between the centres of bolt holes perpendicular to the direction of load transfer, well, the minimum distance that that should be is given as 2.4 D0. So again, those minimum distances have been extracted from table 3.3. So that just completes the overview of bolted joints, and next there is a worked example which I will go through. So here's the example. So we have a lap spliced and we're going to be asked to work out the strength of the bolts. We're assuming that we're dealing with M20 grade 8.8 .8 bolts in 22mm holes and we're told the plate is grade S355 steel. In the diagram we will also be given the spacing, end and edge distances which we will need to use. So the first thing that we need to do is to work out the shear resistance using this expression given in table 3.4. And at the top are some assumptions for this example, so we're assuming that the bolts are in single shear and that the shear plane passes through the threaded portion of the bolts. The equation that we need to use is given there, um, so that there are a number of terms that we need to know before we can work it out. So we need to determine the values of alpha V, FUB and AS, and we should already know that the partial factor gamma M2 is equal to 1.25. So we need to determine AS, so the tensile stress area of the bolt, and for that we can just refer to the blue book. So here's a screenshot from the interactive blue book, and you can see that for an M20 bolt, AS is equal to 245mm squared. I am um, also need the values FUB and alpha V, so FUB is ultimate tensile strength of the bolt. We get that from table 3.1 of EN 1993 part 1.8. And for bolt class 8.8, .8, FUB is equal to 800 newtons per millimetre squared. Now to determine alpha V, we need to refer to table 3.4. And for bolt class 8.8, .8, alpha V is equal to 0.6. So now that we know uh, what the terms are, we can just substitute in the values into the equation. 
And for one bolt, the shear resistance works out as 94.1 kN. And remember that we have three bolts, so we multiply 94.1 by three, and we get 282.3 kN, which is the shear resistance for all three bolts. So that was the shear resistance, and now we're going to work out the bearing resistance. So for that, we need to know the spacing and end and edge distances. So in this case, the spacing P1 in the direction of load transfer is 80 millimeters. Edge distance E1 is 50 millimeters. Um, edge distance E2 is 50 millimeters, and the diameter of the bolt holes D0 is 22 millimeters. We also need to know what the ultimate tensile strength of the plate is. So we know we're using grade S355 steel, and the thickness is 20 millimeters. So we'll use an ultimate tensile strength Fu of 510 newtons per millimeter squared. Now for the bearing resistance, you might remember the terms alpha B and K1. So here we're working out the alpha B terms for the end bolts and the inner bolts. So we find the minimum value for the, of those different terms in the brackets. So for the end bolts, alpha B works out as 0.76, and for the inner bolts, alpha B works out as 0.96. And now we're going to work out K1. So again, we take the lowest value from those terms in the brackets, and we work out K1 to be equal to 2.5 for the edge bolts. So we've got all of our terms in, so it's just a matter of substituting them in. So we need to use this expression for both the end and inner bolts. So we have worked out K1, and that's the same for both. We worked out alpha B, and those were two different values for the end and inner bolts. We determined Fu is 510 newtons per millimeter squared, and D is the diameter of the bolt. And T is the plate thickness, so putting in the values, the bearing resistance of the end bolts works out as 310 kilonewtons, and the bearing resistance of the inner bolts is 392 kilonewtons. So here is a summary of the results. So the bearing resistance of the end bolts is 310 kN, the bearing resistance of the inner bolts is 392 kN, and the shear resistance of all three bolts is 282.3 kN. Therefore, the resistance of the joints is governed by the shear resistance, since that is the critical value. So that's the end of this section, uh, this part one on, of this e-lecture to do with joints. Um, the next section will be dealing with welded joints. Thank you.